Welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, RR Slugger, and I just want to state something for the record. LEGO alternate builds matter. Younger viewers may not know this, but it used to be commonplace for the LEGO group to include pictures of alternate builds on the back of set boxes. Alternate builds were designed to use the pieces included in the set to construct entirely new models. It was typical for most sets to include photos of three separate models you could build with the pieces, though depending on the box design, sometimes more photos would be featured on other sides as well. Occasionally, these alternate builds would appear on the back of instruction booklets too, though not always. There are even some rare examples of booklets actually containing instructions for these alt builds. In fact, the lack of instructions for the vast majority of these models might have been what ultimately led to their downfall. Rumor has it that parents complained to the company when their children wanted to build these models and couldn't find instructions for them. The LEGO group would attempt to alleviate these concerns by using their emerging web presence, but by the mid-2000s, alternate builds were all but extinct. Some notable themes, such as power miners, included online instructions for alternate combiner models harkening back to their 20th century roots. Sadly, even this approach was in the minority as it seemed like alternate builds were doomed to remain exclusive to sets that were designed around that gimmick. Now, it's easy to wish that in a perfect world, LEGO would just start putting alternate builds back on their boxes again. However, we have to acknowledge the cost in doing so. Hours spent designing these models and development time on including instructions for them have to be factored in, and very realistically could result in either less pieces appearing in a set, or even a higher price tag in order to pass the cost onto the consumer. These decisions are not made in a vacuum and have tangible impacts on the sets produced. With that being said, I believe alternate builds add value, intrinsic value to a set. Whether they include instructions for them or not, these models spark inspiration and give the customer other things to construct with the pieces they just bought. To me, older LEGO boxes are more valuable not because they are old, but because of these alternate builds. I'm of course not speaking of monetary value, and rarely do on this channel, but I will say that I always feel like I'm getting a better bang for my buck when I buy a set with included alternate builds. It's always eye-opening to see what else can be done with the same batch of pieces, and in a few rare cases, these alternate builds are even better than the set they're built from. In short, LEGO alternate builds matter. Which is why I am so baffled by the recent Galaxy Explorer set. Released this year, set 10497 was one of only a select few sets to bear the 90th anniversary banner. It should have included another banner as well, 3-in-1. Yes, despite all indications to the contrary, this set includes two additional builds to complement the main model. They even have complete and detailed instructions available online. So where are they? There is no mention of them anywhere on the box. Even the website seems to ignore their existence. There is only a small blurb and single picture of each set inside the instruction booklet, which is only accessible after you've bought the set. I feel so sorry for Michael Psyche. After putting in all that extra work designing these alternate builds, only for it to go largely unacknowledged by everyone. The packaging and marketing teams really let them down on this one. Speaking from my own perspective, I was on the fence about this set. Honestly, I wasn't gonna buy it. But when I heard it mentioned offhand that it came with instructions for two additional spaceships, I was completely sold. After having now built all three models, I am absolutely dumbfounded that a bigger deal wasn't made of this. This might be the best Creator 3-in-1 set I've ever had, and it's not even a Creator 3-in-1! <sighs> All the hallmarks are there. The main build even hides pieces away to be used in the B and C models. This has 3-in-1 design written all over it, so if you're a fan of that series like I am, you will not be disappointed here. I feel like I'm doing LEGO's job for them by telling folks that this is in fact a 3-in-1 model, but I don't want anyone to miss out just because of TLG's bad marketing in this case. 
I can only speculate on the decisions made behind closed doors. So, with that out of my system, let's look at these models in the order I built them. Starting with the C model, this one is based on LL918, the smallest of the original craft. Housing a single astronaut, this craft surprised me with its detail and design, despite using less than half the pieces included. The sleek form factor and arrowhead silhouette really sell the speed and nimbleness this vessel must be able to achieve. The ship doesn't skimp on detail either. This is just as worthy a model as most main builds today. The B model, based on LL924, adds some bulk to the mix. Seating two astronauts, this vessel seems to be a more substantial vehicle, even including a rear cargo hold that can be opened by using these hinges. This build reuses a majority of pieces from the first, so before you ask, you cannot build both at once. Completely understandable, in my opinion. The B model gives you the best of both worlds and can facilitate some exciting adventures in its own right. <laughs> Lastly, we have the A model, based on LL928. This thing is massive, and if I could, I would try to pit it next to the Explorian Starship, as it's the only other spaceship I have that gives that original 1996 build a run for its money. This model can seat all four astronauts and includes an abundance of computers and living space. There's even an airlock door and buggy station with deployable ramp. All in all, this is an amazing model, even if it loses a bit of luster when you can compare it to what could have been done with less. I don't know which is my favorite, but they each do something better than the other two. There is a legitimate reason to want to build or display any one of them, and I'll probably rotate between them depending on space and desire. Something of meaningful worth would have been lost had only the main model been included here. LEGO alternate builds matter. I hope TLG ponders doing more of these in the future. Considering how little promotion was given to the B and C models here, it honestly makes me worried that I missed out on some sets that could have had alternate builds because it wasn't advertised. There are some common rebuttals about why LEGO doesn't do these anymore, but when you see what fans are able to do on their own accord, I don't know if all of these reasons hold true. I for one hope that the move to online only instructions will eliminate some of the cost prohibiting alternate builds from happening. The LEGO group appears unwilling to repeat the past and include alternate builds without instructions, so it seems like it's a both or neither situation here. Let's cross our fingers for both going forward. I've been your host, RR Slugger. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.